Thanks, Joanne. Okay. So um, this is definitely, though I adore and and I'm very enamored with pelvis. I have favorite muscles that I work with. One of them would be the psoas, which is actually tomorrow. As far as practices go, this is my favorite practice. So thanks for joining me. We're officially starting, so make sure you have your mat. Um, I'm going to get this out of the way. So I won't be able to see you anymore because I don't have my glasses on. So if you're commenting, I will certainly check in afterwards. So if we take a moment to think about what we see in nature, most things grow in spiral patterns. They develop in spiral patterns. Everything from the inside of a tree to shells, there's always a pattern and it's circular. And um, if we look at many of the very ancient Bronze Age, even before that, Neolithic, Methylithic, whatever, ages, spirals were considered a very sacral, sacred, sacred symbol. I like to say sacral, sacred symbol. So in doing this practice today, I think that those are the two words that I want you to think about is sacred, because it looks like we're just having a lot of fun, or I hope you're having a lot of fun, but it is a sacred movement. But then the other one, and they may seem like they go against each other, but I don't think they do, is that it's playful. And the brain, the nervous system, learns more through play than through intellect. So remember that too. We're, you know, if, if, if we're looking to free up our body, decrease pain, increase mobility, this practice is really wonderful for that, but you're also going to take your own spin on it, play on words, really you will take your own spin on it. Eventually I'll give you some ideas. So this is one that's really difficult. I'm not able to put it on a sheet for you. If you wanted the PDF, I gave you a little warm up because it, it's, it's so much what you make it today, okay? But, but be invoked by nature and we'll take a moment, let's take a moment to officially set intention for this practice. And today is the first day of spring. That's why I chose this practice. Place your hands on your heart center. If you'd rather be lying down, you're welcome to, because that's where we're going to go eventually. And know that your hands right now are resting on the, I would say, the most efficient and most lovely spiral in your entire body, which is your heart the heart, the four chambers of the heart, it actually starts as a tube, your beautiful heart in fetal development, and it grows into, it spirals around itself to create those four chambers. So this is our first and foremost, our, our loving spiral in our body. And set your intention for yourself to just explore today, really explore. Be open to trying things new, be open to following your body. And to me, following my body means I'm in my heart, not in my head. My head will say, well, what should I do next? Or let's repeat that pattern over and over because it felt good. If it feels good, do it again, but follow your heart. All right. So we'll get started. We're going to come down onto the ground. Again, make sure you have lots of room there. And we're going to come into constructive rest just for a moment to feel the body when it's in its neutral position. So spine is straight, legs are straight, arms, wherever you're choosing to be. This practice today is not a breath-centered practice. You can't do it as a breath-centered practice. Well, you can, but I'm, I'll cue it slightly, but it, I really find that it's better to just Notice your breath. Take your awareness back and forth between your body and your breath. And then we'll start with a very small spiral. So I'm going to have you roll onto your left side. One thing you may want is, I, my blanket's over there, but if you find, um, I'll go ahead and grab it. If you find that your head is falling too far down, here goes my whole pile. 
You can put a blanket, as we've done in other practices, underneath your head. You just don't want it too high. You want your neck. So if I put my blanket way too high, I'll put it too high on purpose, then this side of my neck, the top right side, is shorter than the left. I want it in a neutral position, so just enough to give you a little bit of height. If you want to put something underneath your head, you can do that. I tend to go without it. And then you're going to let your head fall, take your palms together out in front of you, and just take a moment to acquaint your body with this position. Feel your top right hand and notice your head. And before you do anything with your hands, just start to slowly roll your head towards your right shoulder or upward towards the ceiling. So here's where, you'll, where you will know if you need something, if you'd like something underneath your head, because you're gonna feel a stretch through your neck as you rotate your neck. But if it's uncomfortable, put that blanket underneath. You're just turning your head. And then as you're turning your head, let your arm or your top hand slide down your bottom arm a little bit so the shoulder's following and come back. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a spiral through eventually our entire body, but we're starting from the head, your gazing point. Your gaze is leading you into it, turning that way. And eventually my hand comes all the way up to the elbow, my right hand to my left elbow, and then I can keep going. Right hand might come to my left shoulder as I begin to drop my right elbow. But I'm just rolling. If you want to think of it as rolling to the right, that's what you're doing. Rolling to the right. You might feel tightness through your shoulder. You could feel it in your hip. If you're feeling a lot of, so I'm going to show you lots of different mini spirals within the main spiral. If you're feeling a lot of tightness or pain in your hip, you can do what we did yesterday, which was to roll this right hip around a little bit. Imagine having a handle on it. Give it a little roll or a slide back and forth. Get it moving, right? Especially if you just woke up. I've been walking around a lot. Sometimes I forget. Some of you guys are just getting up. I've been up for like th almost three hours already. <laughs> I get so excited. So rock it back and forth. And then continuing into that spiral. So my head is leading my shoulder, then my side body and my hip. And then once we find the upper body and we get to the hip, you're going to begin to let the legs go too. So there's no rule. You can keep your feet together. You can step your right foot out. But I'm going to go all the way until I land on my back. And then I'm going to come all the way back. But I'm going to try to come back head first too. So head, shoulders, torso, legs are last. Really, like I said, there's not a lot of rules except trying to build the spiral right now from head first, and then the rest of your body is following from top to bottom. So shoulders, torso, legs. And there's really a floppy feeling. Or what I like to invoke oftentimes is this idea of being in the sea. A lot of this came of uh, the freedom of doing this type of movement came uh, over a year ago. I was in Jamaica and I had the opportunity to be in the water every day snorkeling and I, you know, just watching all of the creatures and the corals as they moved with the gentle waves of water, the gentle movement that goes on underneath the water. That's what I invoke. I think of a seahorse or even a sea anemone, anything like that. But whatever works for you, it might be that you're a blade of grass with a gentle breeze, a leaf on a tree, and you're just going one way and the other, leading with the head, then the right arm and shoulder, torso and waist. We'll do one more going that way. And wherever you land, you land. Like I said, your feet could be together, they could be wide apart, doesn't matter. And then we're going to switch this. We're going to stay here on our right side again. You can stack your knees however you'd like. We're going to do another spiral. The only difference is we're going to start from our feet instead of our head. So the last one was tongue to tail. This one is tail to tongue. So I might step my right foot out 
take my right leg over, take my left leg over. My waist will begin to go, low waist first, ribs, shoulder, and then the head follows. And if it doesn't go all the way the first time, play with that. So feet first, which is usually the way the body wants to do it, not always. Feet first, rolling to the right, and coming out of it feet first. So you're going to sense that you're going to press into the pinky toe side of the left foot, big toe side of the right foot. So a lot of these other movements we've done in this series got us ready for feeling these things. Feel your inner and outer thigh, the foot roll through the earth, the waist. So your waist is in rotation, just like when we do planes of the pelvis. And I'm just leading myself in and out of the spiral from the legs. Going nice and slow. Sometimes you get stuck in certain spots. That's okay. I also, like I said, I like to change the position of my legs every now and again. And remembering that freedom in the body is being able to make these movements and it'll look the same, but using different movement patterns, different muscle patterns. So that's why we started with the head. Now we're moving from the feet. And the pelvis goes before the shoulders. Last round to finish that one up. An image, whatever you can, to help see your body as very fluid. I, I really I invoke the element of water in this one, that fluidity that we all carry, that levity we carry in our bodies. Sometimes we feel so heavy in our bodies, right? Pain is typically heavy, I think. It can be hot, too. It can be dry. But a lot of times pain is heavy. It's like heaviness in our body. So feel your levity this morning. Okay, and then we'll just pause on our back. I'm going to turn so you can see me and take my headband out because it doesn't want to stay there anyhow. <clears throat> but we're going to pause on our back. You can come back into constructive rest or if you'd rather take your legs out long, just pause for a moment. Feel yourself. You might place your hands on your heart. That four-chamber spiral. If you set an intention, come back to your intention. And so the intention is really, it's a prayer. And it can be a prayer for yourself, prayer for someone else, but we act out that intention in our practice. It's not just something we say to ourselves at the beginning and the end of class. I used to think that. It's something we do during class. We're, it's, it's a prayer for our body, or, or if you're offering it to someone else, you know, you're doing these movements in a way you think, this person would see me and know that I feel pleasure, and that would give them happiness. Sending that positive energy their way. And then we're going to go the opposite direction. So you'll roll on to your right side. Palms together. Remember that if you're putting something under your head, it'll go underneath your right head and ear now, right side of your head. I like to bring my knees up to a 90 degree angle, but you certainly don't have to. They can be here, wherever you want them. Palms together, just sense your palms. And we start by just gently turning our neck towards the left shoulder, like you're going to look up at the sky, and then down to the floor. Very small movement for the neck. Slow. I like to think this is a very sensuous movement. All of your senses, your doors of perception, your eyes, your nose, your ears, and your mouth, you're moving them all. Yet the body knows you're on the ground, so it knows you're safe and secure and supported. And then once your head has done enough movements, start to let the, sh the arm follow the head. You'll notice that the hand will slide down. And I'm not pulling my arm. It's just like it's, it's drawing towards my head. My arm is very relaxed. You might make it up to the elbow with the left hand, right, left hand to right elbow. 
And then we go a little further the next time, maybe to the shoulder. As you go further, you might notice some tightness, I always do, in my left, in your hip, your upper hip, right? So stop, and you can do that miniature spiral with your hip, roll it out, or slide it back and forth. So get it ready for that rotation. So now that I've done that, I'm back to sliding head first. Shoulder follows, upper waist, lower waist. I'm not quite ready to bring my legs over yet. You may be, but don't rush it. You're adding a little bit on. It's like those waves that are that current that's under the water. Start with a really gentle, slow current. And keep that current slow. Maybe just making it a little bit bigger as you go along. Your movements will become bigger. So when I watch the underwater action, you know, there's these little currents that the, the tops of the corals barely move. And then there's these bigger currents where the corals are, are shaking slightly, like a gentle shaking, but all the way down to the bottom, up to the bottom into the sand, right? So when you're ready to move the bottom part of your body, you can do that. Head leads, shoulders, and then letting yourself bring the legs over too, as far as they want to go. Leading your way out of it, head first, shoulder girdle, side body, hips, and then the legs. Just doing both sides, exploring, building that spiral from the tongue to the tail in the spine itself, and then the legs and the arms are just following along. Arms follow the tongue, the legs follow the tail, just like a seahorse. If you're a swimmer, imagine yourself doing these in the water, and I have done them in the water. It's it's fun. Checking in with your breath. Let's do one or two more. Taking your time, head leading. Waist following, hips following, legs following. And then we'll switch it and see if we can lead from our feet, from the toes. So, and you can lead, you can lead from the feet themselves, pressing. So to come bring the legs up, you'll notice you'll need to press into the pinky toe side of the left foot, roll onto the big toe side of the right foot. There's the legs, the pelvis begins to follow the legs, the torso goes, the shoulders go, and then my head follows but you could also start from your thigh. So it's gonna feel different if you're feeling yourself from your feet versus your hips. And you're rolling in and out of the spiral from the legs and hips. Tail to tongue. Remember, you can vary your feet so they're closer together, wider apart. And part of this is we go through those forces that we create. You can get a little more particular noticing 
when it's helpful to push into the ground. So coming out of the spiral, I push into the ground with the right foot and I pull away from the ground with the left leg and foot. So those are the forces with, that we're working with with gravity is that pushing away or pulling away and pushing into and finding the most pleasant way to make these spirals. What combination of pushing into the ground with one part of your body while pulling away, so you might be, find yourself pulling the right hip away from the ground. What works best for you that is comfortable? And finish up your last one here. These are difficult for me to do sometimes when I'm talking. And pause, and we'll come back onto our backs again. Come onto your back. Take a neutral position, just rest for a moment. You can place your hands on your heart again. So see yourself in the sea if, that's, if that works for you, a sea creature. Water element, and we can remember that our bodies are comprised of like over 70% water, right? Let it roll, let it flow, let it float. All of those terms, any terms like that that help you to feel light. And then we're going to basically do the same thing, but we're going to go from one side to the other, and I'll give you some options to take some arm and leg extensions. So in the beginning, I was showing you the internal and external rotation of the arm. So that's a secondary spiral. <clears throat> We're going to possibly add that on. So you can roll. I'm just going to start from my left side, but it, you can start from either side. We'll do head, head to pelvis first or, tail, or tongue to tail, but you can switch it anytime you want. I just encourage you to try to purposely begin and end the spiral from, from whichever end you're choosing. So it's, it's voluntary. So what I might do now is I'm going to begin to turn my head to the right, and then instead of just sliding that arm, I'm going to externally rotate it and reach overhead, get a nice side stretch through the side body, and then it comes around. Once my shoulder is down, my legs begin to follow, so I'm going really slow. I'm putting the camera on slow-mo. And then as I come over, instead of stopping here, I'm going to go all the way the other way. I'm going to reach this left arm overhead, still turning, so I'm still turning my head to the right. That's why you need lots of space. And letting the legs go all the way to where I'm back on my right side. I'll show this from both ways, and I like to pull into a fetal curl, then explode out. So I'm reaching my top arm and leg, and I'm going to come back. Head's going to roll to the left, arms following. I can leave my leg long, pull it back in. It doesn't matter. Rolling all the way. You can take this arm over or just slide it. And legs come back. So you can watch me one more time. I'll show it from the, from the other side, too, so you'll see both sides. But it's really up to you to create these spirals. We're going both directions now. <clears throat> so head first. I let my head roll. And then I can internally or externally even play with turning that doorknob while this hand comes over. So that it's like a secondary spiral within the main one. Once my arm is down, I can rotate my leg rotate my leg. I like to reach my arm overhead. I like to reach my leg long and then crunch it up into a fetal curl. So a fetal curl is a position of rest. Your body knows fetal curl. Of course it does because we've all spent a lot of time there and it knows it's a position of protection and release. So we can roll into that fetal curl and then explode out again. Rolling head, shoulder, waist, legs. I might reach on this side. 
and fetal curl. I often will do little undulations of the spine in the fetal curl in between, just pausing. So now I'm going to give you a full five minutes. We'll take up the last of this class, or maybe about four more minutes, just to play with these anytime you want to stop. Please do. You can stop in the stretch. You can stop in the fetal curl. And the other thing is I'll encourage you, we've been leading from the head. Try leading from your feet and your tail. So feet and tail go. I might even reach a leg long, reach an arm up overhead. Legs going first. And then waist, arms. Curling in, coming out, legs first. I can stretch that leg instead of just tipping it. Stretch it, feel my hip go. It won't look the same. It won't feel the same. Every spiral is a slightly different pattern. Just like if we look at those rings on a tree, each ring as you go inward is a little bit smaller. Or in a shell or any other part of nature, a flower. Those circular, <laughs> circular patterns that we see everywhere around us in nature, you are that circular pattern. And it's not just our heart, much of our body develops in spirals. And notice what parts of your body are being used whatever's not being used. So everything, I like to think everything's being used. But it's either being used as force to move you, or it's being used as a tool of relaxation. So when I'm leading from the legs, I try to make sure the legs are creating that force. And my shoulders are just kind of following along. Eventually, we'll need a little bit of Core help with the shoulders and the arms, perhaps. Take a few more spirals. If you find that it's more pleasant to lead from one end or the other, the feet and the tail, or the tongue and the arms, shoulders, and you've got those secondary spirals in your arms. And the undulation of the spine, that can be there too. Just like if you're familiar with cat-cow. Because you're that, you're that piece of seaweed, you're that piece of coral. You have that ability to just flow and float. No need for repetition, pattern movement. It's just happening. So do one more round for yourself. And after you finish last, last round, Please do come into a fetal curl, either side, whichever one feels more comfortable. You could even use your arm as a pillow. And just rock your pelvis. And as your pelvis rocks, let your head rock. And something I like to do that helps to create a little more ease, softness in our body, and to me, softness is lightness, is to just breathe in your nose 
And as you breathe out, make the sound of shh. Audibly make that sound like you're telling your body to just quiet and settle. You know, when we, when we put a baby to sleep or we want, when I want my dogs to be quiet, sometimes I yell at them, but other times I just say, shh, it's okay, right? So you're making that noise for your own body. And in San the language of Sanskrit, which is the energetic language of yoga, all of our favorite words start with the shh sound because it's meant to be calming for your nervous system. Shavasana, shanti. So we breathe in the nose. And breathe out the mouth. Like you're just letting the air out of your body and filling back up. Feel free to stay on your side as long as you'd like, or you're welcome to go onto your back. I'm going to leave this one completely up to you onto your back and lay in a Shavasana position. You could come back up to seated. That's where I'm going to go. Really entirely up to you. I know that you can be still, but you don't have to. You found the power of intuitive movement in your body. And recognize too, you know, there, there may have been, I know there may have been some grunting. The first time I started doing this, it was like, there's my core muscles, right? There's a lot of core going on. It's okay. So the more you do this, the more you'll be able to do it with ease and with delight. I thank you for joining me today. Enjoy this springtime. March 20th until June 20th. Our days get longer and longer till we reach that longest day. So get out there, enjoy the light, enjoy the air, the fresh air. Be sure to notice as I'm in the Midwest, so my flowers will begin to come up. And notice that, those, those patterns, those spiral patterns in nature that are bringing themselves back into our vision, right? Be sure to be aware of them. And remember that you're not that different than all of those spiral patterns around you in nature. Peace, joy, love, and light. Thank you for spiraling with me. Um, again, if you want to support me on Patreon, I appreciate that. I know many of you are my students, too, and you already do. I'm hoping to do more of these in the future. I'm still working out some things with the camera, so thanks for sticking with me. We're, we're trying to update, uh, upgrade so that eventually I'll be in, uh, in uh, a better resolution than the 720 for you, so we're getting there slowly. But thanks for sticking with me and supporting me. You can also, if you don't want to do Patreon, there's options for donations. And um, I'm here for questions, and I also do private.